Welcome to Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. We've got another top show for you today. We've got Rory Markham calling in, in a little while. He'll be on our digital wall. In studio, we've got my guest, Brad Wharton, as always. Good to see you, Brad. Good to be back. Number 48. And one of my favorite characters in the whole of UK MMA, Jermaine the Pain Fracy. Jermaine, really, really glad you're here as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Really big week in MMA this week, wasn't it? It, it has been yet yeah, another big week in MMA. Obviously, the big uh, headline this week is Alistair Overeem uh, yeah. and his failure of the surprise steroid test, uh, which has really thrown a spanner in the works for the UFC. Uh, 146, obviously, coming up next month. Um, we're going to touch on this, the whole steroid issue again, something we've covered before on the show, obviously, but we're going to touch on that next week uh, a little bit. But the main talking point for me now is who steps in to face Junior Dos Santos at UFC 146? Um, yeah. It's left the UFC with a massive gap to fill. Well, what do you think? What are your picks? Well, I'm going to throw three names out there. Um, as a fan, the person who I would love to see is Mark Hunt. You know, the, the guy uh, is living the fairy tale story at the moment. He's got all the fans on Twitter rallying behind him. Uh, he got on Twitter last week, and I think he's got 10,000 followers already. So really? there's, there's a, a swelling of support there for Mark Hunt. Um, you know, the guy was down and out a few years ago. He's got this UFC opportunity. and potentially could be a few weeks away from getting a crack at the UFC title. Yeah. Um, the guy I think deserves it is Frank Mir. The guy's got uh, three wins on the trot now, all against top opposition. You know, snaps Nagera's arm in two last time out. If that's not enough to get you a title shot, I don't know what is. Yeah. Obviously, Dana White said that his co-main event fight with Cain Velasquez is still on, but that could just be a placeholder at this point. Um, my pick for who I think will end up in the spot is Fabricio Vadum. Uh, tailor-made story there. Dos Santos' debut in the UFC was a, a huge underdog story in itself. Yeah. Uh, knocked with Doom out in seconds uh, to, to you know, announce himself on the scene, and then he's gone on this incredible run at heavyweight. Uh, but Doom's just come off a very close fight with um, Alistair Overeem himself two fights ago. Uh, big win against Big Country last time out. So my prediction is that he'll be moved off UFC 147 and into that main event slot. Yeah, I think that'd be a good shout. That'd be a fantastic fight. Um, yeah, I mean, Mark Hunt might be a bit early for him to step up a title shot. I mean, we've seen some guys take title shots a bit early and, and you know, I mean, it's a big show, it's a, it's a big stage. This is the guy who nearly armbarred Fedor in his like, what, fifth, sixth MMA fight. You know, yeah. the, Mark Hunt doesn't care about whether he, he's ready <laughs> or not. He just wants to go in there and just sling leather. And yeah. you would assume that that's what Dos Santos would do with him. Um, yeah, he, he probably doesn't deserve it on merit, but it's one of those fantastic stories. It's Rocky Balboa for MMA, really, isn't it? Some yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Guy who's a, a tough dude who, who can throw bombs, just getting a shot of the gold. Who, who, yeah. would, who doesn't want to see that? Yeah, true. Elsewhere in MMA, Jermaine, we saw each other at the UCMMA this past weekend. Yeah, good show. Uh, yeah, really good show. What was the highlight for you at that show? Um, Nathan Grayson um, is, is my friend. Yeah. Um, I've known him since he was young, and um, even though he lost against um, the young kid, tell me his name, please. Arnold Allen. Arnold uh, AA. <laughs> We've had this all day. Yes. I'm going to call him <laughs> AA, all right? Yeah. Arnold Allen. Um, it was a fantastic fight, back and forth, up and down, on the ground, standing up. Um, Ar uh, Arnold won. My friend Nathan lost, but... Um, like, like I said before, it's, it's, it's the love of MMA, it's MMA, it's mixed martial arts and yeah. things like this happen, you know, it only takes a split second to make a, a mistake or, or to throw a lucky punch to win That's the exactly fight. That's exactly right. Well, Definitely. Uh, yeah, and, and speaking of split second, we've got uh, our guest joining us on the Scarp Skype wall. Uh, we've got Rory Markham, the, the head kick heard around the world. How about it, Rory? How's it going, guys? Yeah, good, good. Really glad you could join us today. I know it's, it's early for you there. It's about 8 o'clock. That's not too early, 8 o'clock in the morning or so. Oh, it's not bad. I'm I'm, pl I'm very happy to be on. This is a big show, and I'm I'm very honored for the opportunity. I appreciate you guys having me. I don't have much to say, but I'll give you a shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got lots going on. I mean, obviously, you know, we we we've all been fans and watched you come up through the UFC. Um, you've been doing some stuff in the movies lately. Um, tell us a bit what's going on with with Roy Markham. Well, I've been uh, concentrating highly on the movies. Uh, you know, it's it's something that. Um, you know, you need that residual income with fighting as uh, there's always lulls in the sport. Uh, the last movie I just did was a, a big uh, novel by James Patterson called I, Alex Cross. I made great friends with Matthew Fox there. It was Tyler Perry was in the movie, as was Edward Burns, and it's directed by Rob Cohen. So that was that was my biggest next to the setup, which was with uh, directed by Mike Gunther, who's renowned in the stunt world and also a very good director and a very good friend of mine. That was my uh, my biggest part to date as far as speaking went. I, I did, I had, that was the fourth lead in that movie, so it was pretty. Yeah. it was that, a great honor. That was a great film. I re I really enjoyed the setup. It was oh, cool. great storyline, fantastic. Yeah. So, how was it making the transition from going from fighter to you know to actor? I mean, you're you're on set with with you know Bruce Willis and I mean some heavy hitters, and they say, right, Rory, action. 
I mean, it's simple. Honestly, it's timing for me. That's something. The transition is simple uh, in the sense that you get to have a great sense of conditioning in that you've been in front of so many people before, practically in your underwear. Um, you put your heart and soul out in the ring. So if I can't make acting completely 100% fun, I would not do it. So it's that's something I always put into perspective. I tell myself, you know, go in there. If there's beats that I have to plan out or whatever, that's all timing. That's something It's almost like hitting a speed bag. So I kind of feel like I've been conditioned for it my whole life. Oh, that's a good analogy. Yeah, really, really good. And, and so with your with your attention on the movies, are, are you itching to get back in the cage and, and have another fight? Yeah, absolutely. I've always wanted to be the a very powerful star in, in both in both realms I believe that uh, mixed martial arts is one of the purest forms of self-expression uh, I choose to fight the way I do I could always take someone down and do this and of course I will there's there, there's that there's times for that but I like to leave the fans with entertainment the same I, I heard someone say something about Rocky Balboa that gave me a great amount of depth as an, as, as a young kid I walked away from every movie you know with the wanting, the want, my own ability and my want to run or go and, and, and seek after this, you know, this pursuit. It's something that I do for the fans in both realms, and I believe blending the two will help me become a more well-rounded individual altogether. Yeah, yeah, outstanding. And, and well, I mean, and you, as far as the fight game, I mean, you're one of the most entertaining guys that, that, that I can remember. And that, like I said, that, that head kick against Brody was, was amazing. Um, oh, man. And, and <laughs> Thanks. It, this is a good chance. I should plug my fight. I have a fight coming up June 16th, so that's an absolute yes to, to getting back in the cage. I'm sorry about that. But um, we've got I've got that, and then we're talking with Mike Gunther about doing another movie called The Italy Boys. So that's uh, a lot going on, I guess. It's just the uh, the training in the meantime that you have to make sure that you're very diligent about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and when you get hooked up with somebody like, like Mike, for instance, I mean, I, I know... Uh, I've got some friends that are involved in, in making movies and stuff over in the UK, and, and they kind of seem to get their, their ensemble together, kind of get their gang together and, and just move from project to project. Um, yes, what's that like? Yes, absolutely. I feel like uh, if, if Michael if Mike could become like Michael Bay and I could be like a, a Nick Cage, I'm okay with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Do absolutely. some big movies like that. I mean, there's there's always, uh, act, I think directors find comfort. They know people that they can depend on show up to work on time, get their lines done correctly, and uh, always take it very seriously, which I have. Uh, and mostly because out of friendship and love for the, and loyalty for the guy, uh, I never want to disrespect the project he was on. And I think that that is what directors look for in their continuing continuing to work with actors time and time again. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Um, so we've also got uh, my co-host Brad Wharton in the studio as well as Jermaine Facey, one of the UK fighters who just had his first fight in America uh, two weeks ago. Um, so, you know, again, um, as, as you're looking at, at big stages and big fights, um, you know, what sort of advice do you have for these guys that are up and coming and just starting to see some international action? I would say, honestly, the most important thing is to always be yourself. Do not try to spend too much time on creating something that you're not. I see these. Uh, I see some some individuals come in and they want to create a character or, or whatever. Let your, you know, in the ring, the truth will find you. So if you could just be truthful to yourself, everyone wants to see that. And um, that is something that I've always tried to live by and always tried to bring to my fans and let them see exactly what kind of work of art can be displayed in the ring or cage. Rory, obviously, you know, being a mixed martial artist, it's one of the most disciplined professions that, yeah. that you could ever be in. And it requires a tremendous amount of confidence. Do you think that, that you know, the discipline from the martial arts background and, and the confidence from you know, fighting in a, in a UFC event in front of millions of people, do you think that helped you in, in your acting career? 110%. I mean, I got brought up into a stairwell. I met Ryan Philippi for about two seconds. And my first set of lines, he wanted to switch up and improv. So I was like, well... Nah, whatever. I fought in front of millions in my underwear. Let's give this a shot. <laughs> so that, absolutely, the confidence is 100% what guides me through that, that, that realm and that business, and that's something that I'm, I'm greatly appreciative for. I have to thank the UFC and, 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 all my, and all my, and the IFL and everything that I've done for that confidence. That's, that's a great point. I thank you for making it. And, and so you've got a fight coming up in, in June, you said. So um, tell us a bit more about that. Who, who are you fighting against? 
I don't. There isn't an opponent yet. Uh, the, it's a new organization called Battle Extreme, and uh, they're out of Massachusetts, so it'll be near Boston, which would okay. be really cool. I'm an Irish kid from the south side of Chicago, and <laughs> there's um, a lot of uh, a lot of history there. Most yeah. importantly, though, they like what I've done outside of the ring, and that is one of the reasons that they brought me back in and, and have been really excited to have me because I've always tried to, you know, like I said, blend and merge the two, and I think they can both complement one another. Sure. And do you find that works the other way around, too? I mean, do, do you get in, in conversations around the set about what you do when you're not acting, and, and are, are people sort of into that? Oh, man, if that isn't <laughs> the best conversation piece, conversation starter, best segue into acting ever. I mean, a lot of guys, you know, they were models, they were this, they were that, or they'd, they'd really tried their hardest to become actors. When I come in and say, I'm a professional fighter, fought for the UFC, you might have seen my head kick, and it's, <laughs> I mean, it just, the conversation flows from there, and I can speak to anywhere, anybody from 50 Cent to Philippi to Willis, all these guys are completely enamored by the sport. And it's because it's 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 one of the purest forms of self-expression. That's what they're trying to get across on camera is just be yourself. And they want it, they, you want to see a character, but you also want to see that human being. And I think that that's where these two correlate really, really well. And that's... I've been able to talk to every star out there with without any trouble because I've been because I've been a fighter. There's always the same litany of questions, but at the same time, it's it's a great honor to be able to to speak to these people with that kind of um, that kind of confidence. Yeah, and I think in, in America too, that's I mean, UFC is a household name there, isn't it? I mean, so you know, you talk about guy, I, I fought in the UFC or I you know whatever whatever, and and people immediately can identify with with what you're doing, where you've come from, you know, sort of sort of what your sport of choice is. Yeah, what I love about it now is that uh, more so now than ever is is it. People understand that it is the Super Bowl of, of martial arts, of mixed martial arts. And once you say that you've fought and competed at that level, there's an immediate comprehension and understanding. Whereas before, I used to have to be like, eh, it's it's kind of like pro, it's not like pro wrestling. It's like this, it's like that. Whereas now, it's just I fought in the UFC. And it's like, oh, I got gotcha, you, which is nice. I think it's awesome that you know the, the action stars we grew up with, um, you know, the guys like Chuck Norris and uh, and, and Jackie Chan. Yeah, they were they were in all the action movies, and now what we're seeing is guys like yourself and Randy Couture and Mike Pyle. They're the yeah. new generation of action stars. It's going the other way, isn't I it? love that because like it's now it's like yeah, these are real tough guys that we can believe in in, the, in these roles. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. cool to hear. Thank you. That's nice. So are we are we going to see you sometime soon as as the action lead in a film? I pray. Here's what we're doing. I'm over here. I'm in London. I love London, by the way. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's growing. I guess everything's growing in popularity. And uh, I know that, I know I could pull off pretty, a few a few good action roles that, that I do know. And I, and I pray for them. Hopefully I can get them. So did you see the last film that uh, Gina Carano was in? Oh, no, I haven't seen that yet. But I heard she was phenomenal. She's the talk of Hollywood. She's the toast of the town. There's a lot of good things being said about her. She has got a brilliant and bright career ahead of her. I know that. Yeah, well, like I said, I absolutely, as a fan, love to see, you know, as Brad said, guys like you crossing over, um, going to become, you know, my action heroes in, in the in the coming years. So really, oh. really glad that, that you've come on today. We're going to have to let you go. We're just about out of time. But I'm, I'm so glad you came on today. It was really great to talk to you. Wish you all the best of luck, not only in your fight coming up, but in your movie career. And, and we really look forward to seeing you on the big screen again soon. Oh, thank you so much. It was an honor to be on. Thank you so much. Cheers, Rory. Rory, thanks. Talk to you soon. See you. Bye now. Rory Markin, how good was that? What a guy. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> These guys are all, they've got so much going on. Really, really great to talk to them. So we've got to go to the break. Join us when we come back from Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage when we start talking more about Jermaine Facey. We look at his highlight reel and some of the stuff that he did when he was in America. So we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. I'm really excited to talk to my next guest as well. Jermaine, I, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to have you on the show today. Thank you, brother. We've, uh, I mean, we've been friends for a while. Indeed. Um, you've just come back from America, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, back from um, Texas, El Paso, via California. It was, uh, it was a great experience, and um, I, lo I loved every minute of it. Up and down the feelings regarding my fight, but um, besides that, it was, it, was, it, was, it was good to be out there. Yeah, let's talk about your fight a bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, we watched, well, we watched it on, on, uh, on the internet. Um, why didn't they stop it? <laughs> the whole crowd, the whole, the whole crowd was like, what's going on? I, I would swear, but I don't. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> the, it, what, 30 unanswered punches to the head. Yeah. 
and the referee standing there. I was like, looking at the ref, what do I do? He's a guy, he was knocked out halfway through the punches. What do I do? Do I, you know? But I went back after the fight, I was talking to some of the guys. They said, Jay, you should have just killed him. <laughs> well, you, you, you know, this is MMA, it's mixed martial arts, it's a professional sport. And even though I'm, we're there to inflict um, pain and suffering on your opponent, at the end of the day, it's a sport, and, you know, exactly. and, and, and I always look for the safety of, of my opponents and everybody else in this sport. You know, it's a safe sport, and um, I feel that the uh, the referee um, put really put the, the guy's longevity is 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 um, in jeopardy. You know, sure, yeah. You know, he, he may have won the fight, but depending on, on on what mold I was in at the time of the strikes, he could have either brain damage. Well, or he, and he like doesn't that. really know. That, I mean. A referee doesn't necessarily know your intentions compared with the next guy's that, intentions. That's so it, that be, is right. You know, worse, that, is, right? that is right. You know. Yeah, yeah. And that's more to the point, yeah, the, the guy might have won the fight, but you know, th there's nothing to say that he won't be feeling the re repercussions of, of that beating that he took yeah. at some point in the future. You know, we we don't have enough data at the moment to to see what you know, long-term brain injury is doing to mixed martial arts. We see it in boxing. You would think it'd be similar, and when the guy's getting thirty an ounce of chops, we've got four ounce like gloves. So exactly, it's, 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 yeah. you know, it's not sixteen ounces we're, we're fighting in. It's four ounce gloves. It's near enough for your knuckles. And um, I thought that the, the, I thought that it was very, very dangerous and bad refereeing. But mm. the, the whole show was great. Except yeah, tell me about the experience of, of sort of the American experience going over as a fighter. Fantastic, so professional, yeah. so, you know, the, the um, WMMA made us all feel welcome and warm. They looked after us, put us up in the hotel, anything we near enough asked for, we got. Um, it, it was a good experience. It was, it was very different to fighting in the UK. You know, where you, you got your, you know, in America, you know, you, you got your, you have to make sure you got your blood tests done, your checks done, make yeah. sure you got your MMA license, make sure, you know, it's, it, people can get random drug testing and stuff like that. So, so to me, it, it felt better. And this is where UK MMA is, is kind of um, way behind, where we need, no, no, no matter how much it, it costs, the promoters or whatever, we need to move a step forward in doing that because um, there's a lot of people in the, in the UK MMA who are on steroids, on drugs, and they're competing at this higher level and they're waving their hands in the air as if they're champions, but they're lying and cheating the, the MMA UK fans and themselves. Yeah, yeah, I know. I think that's a good point. Do you feel safer then fighting in America as as a fighter when you go out there and you know that your opponent's going to be tested and, and have all these um, you know safeguards put in place? Does that make you feel more comfortable stepping into the cage? I'll, I'll fight anywhere really, but professionally, I feel it's the it's that's they, they're laying the they're laying the um the way for us, and I do feel safer in, in that aspect, knowing that, um, okay, he may cheat in, in, in his weight cut or whatever like that, but at the end of the day, I know that you're not going to be on steroids, you know what I'm saying? At least, yeah. so at least yeah. I don't care if you're a light heavyweight coming down to my, my level, you want to fight, I'll fight you, but at least I know you're not um, juicing yourself up, and, that, and that's what a lot of the UK guys are doing. And, it, yeah, and to me, enough. they've been doing it for a long time, I've fought, and I'm, I know I'm going to fight guys who, who, who have been on it, and I... I, I I can't look in the mirror and say that I've done it. I would never. Yeah. I would never do it. Yeah. Well, you've you've been in some in some wars, and I've been fortunate to, to be sat cage side. One of my favorite fights of all time yeah. uh, was when you fought Royce po Ross Pointon, and, yeah. uh, and I've got a clip of that. So let's roll the clip of Jermaine Facey versus Ross Pointon. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a record of six wins, six losses. He stands six feet one inch tall. He weighed in at seventy-seven kilograms. Fighting out of Band Dogs MMA, Jermaine the Pig Fancy! Well, it was Facey that struck first. Inside leg kick. Focus on both oh, guys. Nice Beautiful head kick. head kick. Wow, that rocked him. Went for it again, but Point and able to get the takedown. Facey looks to scoop himself out, doesn't quite get it. Point and into. Half guard position now. Basically trying to push past Point and doing a good job. Moves to side mount position. Well done by Point in nice into side control. A very underrated ground game. Oh, oh nice himself reversal. with a great reversal. And you can hear the crowd riding oh, with that. Big Huge shot. shots from Basie. Swinging. Swinging, swinging, looking for that finishing punch. And there's a huge shot, pointing in oh. all kinds of trouble. Oh, oh pointing in corners, the big shots. Both of guys are just that throwing That backed up, Basie. Basie wow. felt the punch from pointing. Pointing was in trouble. Big overhand right, Basie backed up. Obviously, Basie having the reach advantage. Pointing be well served. 
A point would be well served to close the distance if Facey was actually throwing strikes. There's oh! a fire! Huge win! <laughs> That's one of my favorite finishes of, of all time. Oh, where you, you just sort of kind of looking for your target, stopping. Yeah. Just, bam, yeah. Was a fantastic fight. Yeah, because I, I, st I studied, uh, you know, I don't normally study fighters, but um, it was literally two days before my fight. I was at home and I was chilling out and I thought, so, so let me just watch this kid. So I, I watched a um, couple of his fights and what I noticed every time his opponent attacks him, or, or he literally tucks down. He literally bends down for it. Yeah. So at that point, when we had a little um, tussle, my heart was really pounding real bad. So I thought, all right, let me just step back a bit and let's just, just, just get my thoughts back. Get, you know, just calm myself down. And then I, it was the right moment. It was just there. I just thought, yeah, take it. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I mean, credit to Ross when he caught you with a good shot just before that. He, 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 he um, <laughs> no, <laughs> when he hit me with that shot, um, I was just about to carry on. We carried on for a little bit, and then um, I stepped back a bit. At that time, when I stepped back, I was, I was just about to jump back in, and then I could feel my back teeth got cracked, and it rolled. Oh, no. It rolled to the front of my mouth. I was like, oh, I threw it out, like, <laughs> and like the referee gave it back to me. Jay, yeah, right, I said, like, oh, what's that? And carried on with the show, man. So he, yeah. he, he, he did hit me with a good shot. Definitely, yeah. you're in there to get hit, and yeah. not to get hit and hit back. So um, well, yeah, you know, like I said, some of your fights. I mean, you, you've been in some scraps, and you're, you're always you always bring it. It's always exciting to see you fight. I was a fan before I was a fighter, and. Um, the guys who, who who I look up to and the guys who I like to see are the guys who go out there and put on a show. When you got the guys who just want to lay and pray and hold you down and just to stay there and get the little the little um, decisions, they, I don't feel that, and the fans don't feel feel that. Yeah. You know, you, it's all it's all good getting your seven and O's and nine and O's and just by laying and praying. Sometimes the business is good to get get that, but I'm not in the sport for that. I'm in the sport to win and entertain. Yeah, yeah, win big or lose big, right? Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, I think yeah, that's part of it that, that people often forget. You know, yes, it is a sport, but when you're asking people for money to watch it, it's, it's an entertainment business as well. And you know with, with Jermaine, whenever you see him fight, it's going to be entertaining. That's why you go down to the Troxy when Jermaine fights, it's, it's packed out and the crowd are going absolutely nuts because they know they're going to get a show. Yeah, yeah, Troxy's Band Dog's house, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, Band Dog territory, yeah, trust whenever me. Yeah, any of you guys are on the card, it, it's just the crowd is mental. And I, there's... I think they've... Um, I, it's just exploded, you know, you yeah. know we're, we're a new club and um, we've been going for about three and a half years now. And I, f I feel that the fact, because I think all of our fighters, all the fighters down band dogs, we kind of got the same mentality. We go out there to kill, we go out there to finish the fights and we go out there to entertain. And um, it's just, it's been like that from day one and there's, there's, there's no land prayers in the gym. Cause yeah. the, the, he wouldn't be allowed, he wouldn't be tolerated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he, would be, he would not be tolerated, and we're, we're not there for that. We understand there are game plans, and there's teams who will just do the uh, one two shoot, take you down, hold you down, get the points. We understand that, we know what teams they are, we know what fighters they are. But um, at the end of the day, we're, we're entertainers, and we're, we're, we're there to put on a show, and that's the bottom line that we love to do with button shows. Any of our band dog boys win, lose, lose, or draw, we're there to put a show on. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I think you're right, Brad. I think that's that's spot on. That's the right uh, uh, the right approach for fighters as well. And you do a lot of, and I want to talk about Sunday Brawl. We'll come to that in a minute. But you yeah. do a lot of other stuff outside the cage um, that's just good for the environment. Talk about hands up, guns down a bit. Yeah, well, I, I started a, a foundation called um, Hands Up, Guns Down, where literally we take. I, every time I talk to people, I say kids, but it's not just kids. It's some, um, it's adults, it's women, it's big, it's big people. We take them off the kids and bring them into into our gym. We give out free MMA sessions, and um, it's, it's all about just giving back to the, to the community. We've done um, charity events where we've raised uh, ten thousand pounds for um, a young kid to go to America to get uh, his um, a treatment done so he can he can learn to walk. Um, um, if you if you uh, Google Joe's journey, you'll see this young four year old. I think he's four, four three or four four years old. Um, he needs to go to America to get an operation done, and then. Um, 
his dad approached us to put on um to put on an MMA show alongside a boxing show together, and then um, we did it, and it was literally um, band dogs versus band dogs on that show because it was literally um a two a two to three week turnaround just to get the show up and running, yeah. and um so we, we we like to give back to the community as well as take from the shows and from when guys pay their money to come see us fight, and the, um the hands up guns down um element is um you know I've had a lot of people in my lifetime uh, who have um been involved in gun crime, knife crime, and been on the both sides of the uh, of, uh, of, of, of the situations when, when sure. um, guns and knives come into people's lives. And um, I, I just feel that, you know, if I've got a chance to go on the TV and talk about kids going to go to school, go, get into a club, you know what I'm saying, get your education right, because education is power, and, and, yeah. and people don't realise that. And, um, you know, I'm just here to try and just do my bit for uh, the community. And plus, I've, I've got my boy, my... my 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 eleven year old year old boy and I want to show him, um, you know, the, the way to live. Really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, there's there's good and bad in everybody, but at the end of the day, you, um, whatever you do in life, um, people will look at you and they won't look at your family or or anything around you. You're responsible for your own actions. Absolutely. We've got to go to break. I want to talk a bit more about hands up, guns down when we come back. So join us when we come back on Sports Tonight Live presents the Cage. Welcome back to Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. Just before the break, we were talking about hands up, guns down. Um, you know, that the, the one thing that I got to say, Jermaine, is, is guys like you who start to get a bit of celebrity in the UK, it's fantastic to see you using that to positively impact the community, and, and I can't praise you enough for what you're doing. It's really, really good work at, at hands up, guns down. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. And I've got a lot of thanks for the guys at the gym, because sometimes when I'm not there, they take up the rain. Yeah, and, and you know, down at the Bandogs MMA, um, they take up the rain, and, and I'm, I'm happy. It's on the family, isn't it? Yeah, it's all family, man. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. Indeed. So you got some other stuff coming on. I, I just want to touch on yes. that. Yes. What's going on this weekend? And this weekend at Crystal's Banking Suite in Crystal Palace, we've got our show that we do. It's a semi-pro level, and it's called um, Sunday Brawl, where we take the semi-pro guys who from the Hands Up Guns Down movement, can we bring them into the um, MMA scene, and they they want to um, stay in the club and continue on their career in the MMA. They go on the show plus other, other fighters from around the um around the country uh, come down our show and they compete and they fight and i'm the special guest referee of course nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i've done over 120 fights already have you yeah, yeah. We've, we've had um this we've had 12 shows so far and um, i've refereed all of them I made one big mistake in in in, in the 120 fights. One, oh, it's not a bad record, though. Not a bad record. Right. Right. Not yeah, a bad yeah. record. Real bad. It's great that you give that. I mean, kind of touching back on on hands up, guns down. Yeah. It's great that you give those guys sort of the next step. You say, right, come and train. We'll help you. We'll we'll give you something else to get focused on in your life. And that's and what we do. By the way, here's competition. Yeah, this this Fantastic. is what we do. We give them a target. Really they know it's, it's an MMA club. They know it's yeah. a fighting club. And then they see that I'm fighting on TV and stuff like that. And some of the other guys, and they they see us as celebrities and as fighters. I don't really see myself as that, but um, that's what they do. Sure. And um, so I say, listen, you're coming, back, you're coming off drugs. You're coming off drink. Yeah, you're coming off your gambling habits or whatever, you know, or, or whatever lifestyle that you're trying to um, get away from. I'm going to give you a goal. This is your goal. You've got eight weeks, six weeks, nine weeks to actually um, get yourself into training. And that's your target. No matter how you feel, when you're ready, you're going in and then you're going to express. Because semi-pro, and what some semi-pro people don't realise is that um, when you, you can fight 10,000 semi-pro fights and you, you can lose them all. But when you go yeah. pro, you're 0-0. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, and then we've got, uh, just quickly, we're going to talk about the UFC in a second, but yes. um, you've also got another big event coming up. Was it Joe Long from Senny? Yeah, Senny Joe day. Long approached me and they yeah. asked me to bring um, Senny, to, um, Senny, to bring Sunday Brawl to Senny, so we're doing that, and that's June That's uh, June, June the um, 3rd, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, that, that, so that's going to be brilliant. Yeah. So that's going to be actually an MMA show within the walls of Senny, so we're really, That's going to be fantastic, yeah, yeah, big, yeah, big and, show. And so we've got a lot. So guys, if you, want to get on, if you want to get on there, you know, you hit us up on Band Dogs MMA and um, Facebook, Twitter, and, you know, if you want to get on there, we, we can work something out. Yeah, fantastic. Well, let's move on. Big UFC card this weekend. Yeah, finally. It, yeah. it feels like years since I last saw a UFC <laughs> event. Um, there's been so much other stuff, you know, the, the mind boggles. But, um, yeah, UFC in Sweden, UFC on Fuel 2, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, a, a fantastic card. Um, all kinds of international talent on there. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I was a bit devastated that Little Nagara got pulled out of the main event, but what a replacement, Thiago Silva. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, that's going to be a fantastic fight. Yeah, for me, Alexander Gustafsson, one of the top up and comers in the sport at the moment. Um, yeah. you know, he lost, uh, I believe, his second fight in the UFC. He's been an absolute tear since finishing everybody left, right, and centre. 
Thiago Silva's got a huge point to prove. Um, yeah. He absolutely spanked Brandon Vera about a year ago. Uh, fortunately, tested positive for steroids, which is something we've been, <laughs> kind of been talking about all day. Uh, and he's been out for a year. Yeah. So, you, you know, th they've given him a second chance. He's got to win and win big here if he wants to keep yeah. his job in the UFC. Um, Brian Stan, Alessio Sakara. I saw somebody on Twitter said, what does the UFC hate Alessio Sakara or something? Putting him <laughs> yeah. in Brian Stan. Um, Brian Stan's, I mean, I think he's amazing. He's a fantastic fighter. Um, Alessio's kind of a, a blast from the past, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's kind of one of those names. Yeah, he's been around for a long time. It, what people forget about him is he's actually a fantastic boxer and he's got yeah. a very good professional boxing record. Um, in MMA, obviously, it, it's a slightly different game. Um, you know, you can't just be a good boxer and, and win MMA fights. Uh, Brian stands a bit of a nightmare match for him because the dude hits like a truck yeah, and, and yeah, Sakara yeah. will stand in the pocket and trade. So I don't really envisage that one going much further than the first three minutes. Yeah, yeah. When we were talking earlier before the show about the, the Tiago fight and, and this guy that he's, uh, that he's fighting that not many people have seen or heard of. No, and, and I, I see you left that one for me to pronounce. I did, well. yeah, because yeah. I just... Yeah, he's called Sia Bahadazada. Bahadazada. Um, he's he's uh, from Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, he signed with Strike Force in 2010, I believe, or 2011. Uh, was never used. He had some interesting theories on why that was uh, to do with his nationality. But um, regardless, the dude can bang. I mean, th this guy's uh, 24 and 1, uh, knocks people out left, right, and center. Um, the, the dude's a powerhouse, trains out of Golden Glory, so you know his striking is just on point. Yeah. Um, and, and that's going to be a fantastic striker versus grappler match. And you look at Paolo Tiago as well, he's a guy whose boxing has come on leaps and bounds. Mm. So that's going to be a really interesting clash of styles. And obviously, we've got the Brits as well. We've got to talk about our boy John Maguire. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I love John. Um, yeah, and I've known John for a long time, and, and to see him hit the big show and to see his, his debut, what a fantastic job. Um, again, took a big shot and, and shook it off and came back and, and finished the fight. And I think uh, DeMarquez is going to be a really good test for him. Um, what do you think about, about Pickett and Page? Is this make or break for Pickett in the UFC? No, it's not make or break for him. Um, mm. the, the guy is a really talented fighter, and, you know, very similar to Jermaine, you know with Brad Pickett, you're going to get a show. Yeah, um, you yeah, know, yeah. He had an unfortunate loss in his UFC debut um, in England last year, but fight of the night, you know, he's going to go to war. And Damasio Page is a guy who will gladly, gladly oblige him. Yeah. Um, I spoke to Brad the uh, weekend before last, and uh, we were talking about Damasio Page. He's a very emotional guy. Mm. So, you, know, you can just see by looking at him, you know, he's got his heart on his sleeve, he's, everything's tattooed, or he's got his life story tattooed all over his body. And, and he fights like that as well. You know, yeah, he's actually got good takedowns, he's got a good ground game, but he'll just go, you know, full steam ahead at Brad Pickett. And I believe Brad will knock him out in the first round. Yeah. You know, when I, when I first uh, was over in the UK and first getting involved in the MMA scene, um, and I was training with, with David Lee, and I was training with him in his lead up to the, UF, or the uh, UCMMA fight with Pickett. Um, and shortly after that fight, I was writing a series of articles for a magazine called Training with Lions. And so I called Brad and, you know, I said, yeah, I'd like to come in and train with you. And, and you know, I'm just showing up and doing a bit of, of stuff with these various guys and then writing about it. Um, and, and I told Brad, I said, I said, you know, I, I want to know what it's like when you choked Dave out. I want to know what he felt. And he put me in this guillotine. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, and, and you, you start to see stars and you start to go black. And, and I mean, I, I fancy myself a bit of a wrestler and can handle most, most guys on the ground. But, but Brad, no way. And, and yeah. you know, I had... 30, 40 pounds on him, and he so, was just a So all these English guys who are, who are just strikers, and you've got Brad Pickett submitting people with Peruvian neckties in the, the Well, BBC, exactly. So. John, the same thing. Exactly, He's exactly. Jiu -jitsu. And there's a guy who supposedly never had uh, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu lesson in his life, and, exactly. and he's just come up with his own style. Got to love those guys. Great characters, both of them, great fighters, and uh, yeah, wish him luck on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, and I think the, the UFC card's going to be fantastic. Um, yeah, and, and so it, it's good to, to get the UFC cards, you know, kind of coming with, with some frequency again, because for a while there, that was every week, and then, like you said, it feels like it's been forever. Yeah, well, we had, um, I think we had seven events in eight weeks at the beginning of the year, so uh, good to get some time off, but now we've obviously got this card this weekend, uh, the weekend after, one of the biggest fights of the year, John Jones and Rashad Evans, yeah. and then on from that, you know, you've got the FX shows, you've got the Ultimate Fighter finale, it's going to be coming up soon, it's yeah. going to be kicking off, and also you've got the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix final, Josh sure. Barnett versus Daniel Cormier coming in, uh, in May, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So Jermaine, what are we going to see on the big show? Wait for the phone call, man, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. You know, I, I, I would love to definitely jump on board and um, get on there and... Mm -hmm. um, and then compete on the big shows. And the if you could write your own contract, who would be your uh, your debut in the UFC? Who would you fight? Wow, UFC debut. Um, it would be George St. Pierre. Just go 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 for the top guy. <laughs> I know, think and then you would, can't lose, can you? Then, then he will, you know what? Um, 
I sometimes I have, sometimes I have trouble with these guys who would love to hold me down. These 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 uh, so-called wrestlers. Yeah. And 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 you know, sometimes I feel that wrest you know wrestling is a base that you need. This is what everyone's been telling me. Yeah. yeah I had my first um, wrestling class at. Um, at um, Uriah Faber's gym when I was in um, California. Oh, nice, I yeah. went down there and um, I was training with some of these guys, even though Uriah and the rest of the guys were in Vegas at the time. But I w went in there and I met a guy, uh, Kenneth Alexander, he was a um, grappling coach down there. And um, I, went, I did my first ever wrestling class. I went on the mat, he goes, where's your shoes? I said, what shoes? So I don't bet, I'm bare foot. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he goes, nah, man, you need your wrestling shoes. Yeah. So he gave me his wrestling shoes. It was a little heel on there. It was a bit funny, yeah. man. And then my bottom one, and it was a fun class. I, wouldn't, I didn't think wrestling was so fun. And, yeah. and it was really exhausting and really, you know, I, 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 I've never did wrestling before. And um, yeah. I got on there and I really enjoyed the class. And, um, and I, feel, I understand w w how uh, a lot of these wrestlers, wrestlers are re really um, taking over the UFC. It's different mentality, isn't it? it when you're it wrestling, because I, I, you know, I grew up wrestling, and, and so um, even for me, when I started taking jujitsu classes, yeah. um, after having a wrestling base, it, I, I really kind of had to turn my head around because it was very, very different principles, very different stuff. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I got in there, I got on the mat, and then I'm jumping guard. Yeah, of course. I'm, yeah. And the guy, what, what are you, <laughs> get off your back, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm comfortable here. And yeah. go, no, no, that's not the game. You don't do that. I'm not. I'll, I'll, it took me a while. It took me a while. It took me about half the class to understand that you don't jump guard. I'm, I'm yeah. happy to jump guard, and um, <laughs> it, was, it was a fun experience. But because um, yeah. before I actually did it, and I started understanding it even more, I used to feel that res wrestling, the wrestlers are kind of um, killing the sport, you know, because what they're doing is holding you down and just yeah. really. Because you know what, I feel sometimes they are. But if you're a good wrestler, you got to learn to strike as well. You got to learn to do your wrestling, get them down, finish the fight. Yeah. Ground oh, yeah. and pound them out the game. Don't just hold them down, you know. And this is what I, I, a lot of the fans are finding it boring. And because the MMA fans, there's a lot of new MMA fans who don't understand the whole sure. elements of different types of f and fighters and sports and styles. They're, they're losing focus on, on the fight. When the guy's doing something good, when he's holding you down, it's, it's still chess. He's yeah, still doing absolutely. something. Yeah. You know, you know. Uh, some of them don't understand that and then they're losing focus. So these wrestling guys, all, all I'm saying to the wrestling guys, finish the fight, ground and pound them out the game, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Posture up and strike down, drop an elbow, because Absolutely. a lot of them are really, no, are really right. uh, making us right. fall asleep watching I'm gonna, go I'm another gonna break. throw one out there really quickly. Yeah. I'm gonna say Amir Sadala versus Jermaine Facey in the UFC, that's a fight I'd like to see. I was gonna say Dan Hardy versus Jermaine Facey. I'd like to see Absolutely. that. I'll fight anybody, too. I don't yeah. care, bro. <laughs> Bring them on, man. Yeah. So we gotta, go to, Dana. gotta go to a break. Uh, we'll come back with more Jermaine Facey right here on Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. Welcome back to Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. We've been talking to Jermaine Facey today. Jermaine, you've got another big fight coming up, don't you? Yeah, May the 26th, Troxy uh, fighting Jake Boswick for the welterweight um, title. What was vacant by John Maguire, who's gone to UFC, and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a banging it's gonna be a banging show. The, the, these are the type of fights that I wake up and I run and I train for. You yeah. know, fighting guys who, who, who's he's an entertainer just like myself. And um, these are the type of guys I want to fight. I don't want to fight these land prayers, these boring fighters, these guys who, are, who no one knows but been <laughs> been given four, five, nine fights and say they're the best. These are the guys I want to fight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, and Jake coming down a weight class, isn't he? Yeah, it? he's coming down, so yeah. you know, I'm, I'll be weight watching him and <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure that on that Friday before the, before the fight, he's 77 on the ball. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So it's, it's going to be. I think, well, you were just talking before the break that you want to fight guys that, that stand and bang. And yeah, I, I want to fight exciting fighters. You know, you've got people calling me out and stuff like that saying, I want to fight you, you're dodging me. But then, to me, they're nobodies. And to me, they've been given fights, they've been feeding fights. And the fans know, the mad thing about it, yeah. the fans know this. The fans know when you've had an easy fight, easy four or five fights, just to get your 7 0, your 4 0, your 6 0. The fans know that. I know that. As a fighter, I know that. I've never chose for an easy fight. I've never asked for an easy fight. It doesn't make sense to me. This is one yeah. fighting Jake Boswick, and yeah. I'm happy to fight this kid. It's like Rory said on there, you know, in the end, when you're in the cage, the truth will find you. So, you know, you can go out and, and beat a lot of guys who are just fed to you. And how many guys do we see, you know, jumping into the UFC now? 7, 8, 9 0. They get smashed out of the park in their first well, exactly. fight, and we never hear from them again. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Definitely. I think, I mean, you've got to manage your career too, don't you? Because I mean, you've got certainly everybody that that's that's less experienced than you is mm -hmm. going to want to fight you. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I look in the mirror and sometimes I feel, you know, I was just like that. I was asking to fight all these. This is how I got to where I am yeah, now because I've been asking to fight all the best fighters, all these guys who've had twenty fights. I've I've only had three, so. 
I can. You got to make your way. Don't yeah, you? And then yeah, you yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I do yeah. understand. One day it's going to happen. So yeah. I do understand the, the the cry that they're crying for. But yeah. to me, as as a person who who, 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 who is um you have bled in the ring, you have cried yeah. in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I only want to fight the best out there and the guys who are, who are at my same level. Yeah. May not in um in the, in record levels, but in in popularity, in who they are. Yeah. You know, these and, are, and making good fights. And make, uh, and make so, yeah, good fights. Yeah, these are the guys I want to fight. Definitely. Right. Fantastic. Well, Jermaine, it's been a pleasure talking to you today. I'm so glad you were able to come in. Appreciate that. Um, like I always do on my show, I'd like to give you a limited edition Hollywood It's Go Time t-shirt. This is actually the last one of this edition that you're going to get. Seriously. And that I'm going to give away. So, Jermaine Facey, that. welcome to the Hollywood Army. I'll take that. Thank <laughs> you. And now we're going to take a look at some time I spent this weekend with Hoist Gracie at Joe Long's office at Senny. Hey guys, it's Hollywood here. I'm so excited today. Uh, we're going to talk with UFC Hall of Famer, Hoist Gracie. Hoist, so glad to see you. Good to see you. Um, you know, you are the whole reason that, that I'm into MMA. Um, UFC 2 was, was the, my first taste of mixed martial arts, and of course, there you were just, you know, taking names and killing everyone. So, um, like I said, you're, you're one of my all-time, all-time idols. Uh, we met the first time I saw you at UFC 100. Um, and Las Vegas. That's right, Las Vegas, yeah. And I happened to be having breakfast and going up to the salad bar, and, and you were across the salad bar for me, and nobody knew you were there yet. And I was just starstruck the first time I, I saw you. I can walk him. by the crowd, very discreet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're so glad to have you over here in the UK. I know you're doing some, uh, some seminars. Um, Joe was kind enough to organize this interview, so again, we're really, really glad to see you. Um, but, but I want to talk a little bit about, so, I mean, you've been in the game for a long time, and, and I mean, a lot of us can, can thank you for bringing the UFC to us. Um, because if not for your family, I don't think there would be a UFC. My father, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just a product of his work. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how have you seen the game change over the years from, from the time you were there to, to now? The rules change. In yeah. the beginning, it was very raw. There was no gloves, no time limit, no weight division. So right now, I mean, in order to grow, they had to adapt. They had to put those rules. So it can grow worldwide. Now it's not just in Brazil or America. Now it's all over the world. And, and we see certainly um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is a, is a key part of every top guy's game, which, I mean, back in the day, it was, it was just you and your family, wasn't it? Um, so, I mean, how do you feel about seeing Brazilian jiu-jitsu kind of spreading throughout the world? That was the main goal. I mean, my father, my family's been doing this in Brazil for a long, long time. And then Horon had the idea. He brought, I mean, he came to America and started teaching Jiu Jitsu, Grace Jiu Jitsu, in the garage. We moved to a gym, got a nice gym. But in order to spread out, we need the media. We need you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so once he created, Horon created the UFC, he would spread out all over, brought media from all over the world. Everybody got interest on it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and now, like I said, it, it's part of everybody's game, isn't it? I mean, it, there's, there's opportunity to train Jiu Jitsu all over the world. Now, um, what Dana White did, it became a dream for the little kids. Before, was two martial artists, they come in, they duke it out, see who is better, who is, which martial artist style is better. After proving all that, now it became a dream that the kids like grow up like, uh, one day I want to be a rugby player. One day when I grow up, I want to be a footballer. One day when I grow up, I want to be a UFC fighter. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's yeah, it's mainstream right now. Yeah, really, really good. And, and obviously, you've got opportunity to go all over the world still and, and teach seminars. And, and you're over here doing some seminars um, in the UK currently. Um, so as, as you're looking at the game, you mentioned the rules have changed, um, time limits and, and rounds, et cetera. Um, which way do you prefer the rules? Do you prefer time limits? Or would you rather see untimed fights? I mean, the time limit, the rules, it's even for both of us. For both fighters, so in order to grow, we need that. And and weight classes now, because I mean, you you fought some big dudes. <laughs> Being there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> so who is who is the um, I guess who is the biggest guy that stands out in your mind that you ever fought? Akibono, six foot eight, four hundred and ninety pounds. <laughs> I remember that fight. That yeah, fantastic. And and so, I mean, coming up, when you're looking at somebody like that, as as you were sort of coming up in your career, um, what's going through your mind when you're looking across the cage or across the ring at somebody that's 400 pounds? 
I think he's more worried about me than yeah. I am about him, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I, I got, actually, a couple of the fighters said, man, it scares me when I look at somebody your size. They said that after the fight. I said, look at somebody your size, and you're confident to go at it. Yeah, and they think, what's he doing here? He, what, yeah, he, what he got? Yeah. What kind of secret does he got? <laughs> what did he got inside the sleeves of his gi? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Um, so obviously you're still a fan of, of UFC, you're still a fan of MMA. Um, what fighters do you enjoy watching today? The guys that know how to use the strategy. Yeah. The guys that have a game plan, they come in, they have a strategy. Not just the guys that come in and do get out and they don't care what happens. No, I like the guys that know how to use strategy. That's 90% of the, the BJJ game, isn't it? It's, it's what's in your head. It's the person. It's a lot of the fighter, the person. Yeah. The, a lot of the fighter, it's not just the BJJ or, no, a lot of it depends on the fighter. Yeah. Some fighters know how to use it. Some fighters are just tough. They just come in, duke it out, don't care. And, and are there any guys in particular that you really, really like to watch? Anderson Silva, St. Pierre, the BJ Penn, Nick Nate Diaz. So they know how to use the strategy. They come in with a game plan. They make the fight look easy. That's strategy because they take their opponents out of their game. Yeah, I've got to agree with you. Nate, Nate and Nick both are two of my favorite fighters of all time, and I just absolutely love to watch those guys because they're they are strategists. Nate, particularly, he's really looking for for this, and and much like you, looking at at guys that that. Um, from the outsider might think, oh, gee, he doesn't have a chance. And then he just gets in there and he just works it and works it and works it and finds a way, doesn't he? Knows how to work the game. Yeah, exactly. Um, so as I said, Joe Long organized this interview um, in, in advance of Senny. I know that you've had some other commitments, so you're not going to be able to come to Senny this year. But, but maybe you can tell our viewers. Yeah, don't say that, man. He's going to choke me yeah. out, man. <laughs> <laughs> I've been coming to Senny every year. This year got stuck. Yeah. He's, he's waiting for me to choke me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's standing over there rubbing his hands. Um, so, so what can you tell our viewers about why they should come to Seni and, and what Seni has to offer? Man, that's the biggest gathering of all the martial arts equipment, products, people. Um, it's, I would say, very dear to the world. The biggest one in the world. One of the biggest one in the world. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the show this year. And, and again, I'll be sad to miss you, but I'm really glad that we had an opportunity to chat here today. Um, something I like to do on, on our show, The Cage, is every week I give to my guests a special limited edition Hollywood t-shirt. Limited so, edition, but you give it out every week. Just to I people that are so on my- special, you should do, How long you should be around? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, Hoist Gracie, welcome to the Hollywood Army. So glad that, that you're here. Um, it's been a pleasure to chat to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> So this is Hollywood. It's not go time, but it's time to go. We'll see you next time on Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. Stay ahead of the game with Sports Tonight Live. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for Sports Tonight Live on Facebook and like our fan page. Follow Sports Tonight TV on Twitter and tweet us your thoughts and opinions. Sports Tonight Live, it's the platform for the fans.